but top secret location. It's the spies who love me, bringing together me TV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Brave. Now what are we gonna do? The best we can. Suave. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Monday morning. It's on the air, off the presses. Today we're going to be talking about a trip to Armenia by a local anchor and her videographer. That's right, 436, Me TV Option 11. We're here for the full hour. Back in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. Glad to have you along here on a Monday morning. It's on the air, off the presses here on Connect With Me on Me TV Fresno. And I should say that today's program, and we thank him for that. Our sponsor today is Dr. Thomas Casagrande, 2020 Optometrics. You may want to go out there if you have eyesight problems like I do. He's located at Shaw and Blackstone. He's a longtime sponsor here, and we appreciate uh, that from him. Also, last night, I just want to congratulate the Golden State Warriors winning uh, game number five of the NBA Finals. Finals. They now lead it 3-2 to two going into Cleveland tomorrow. Stephen Curry had a terrific game, although uh, LeBron James had another 40-point performance. So tomorrow night, they're back in Cleveland. I want to remind you, all the viewers out there, that you can call in today at 436-MeTV, Option 11. And each and every Monday through Friday, we are on your television dial. Here's how you can catch us uh, every day, live at 10 o'clock. Comcast, channel 187, of course, if you have Comcast cable. Hey, if you don't have cable, not a problem. You can catch us on 43.6 or 13.1 live. And then later in the day, if you want to watch the replay, you can at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on 13.6, 8 o'clock at night on 4.6 Biz TV. And then the Twitter account is at John Malos uh, Me TV. Today, it should be a terrific show, and I encourage you to call in at 436-Me TV, option 11. Yeah, I must say, if you are a regular viewer of this program, then you know that we've had countless, countless shows about the 100th commemoration of the Armenian Genocide. We've had multiple guests, multiple shows come in. Experts talk about what happened during the genocide. I want to roll the videotape uh, because here at home recently at Fresno State, they unveiled a brand new genocide monument. Thousands showed up. In fact, about four to 5,000 did, including University President Joseph Castro, who made it his mission to build this monument. It was unveiled on Thursday, April the 23rd. No doubt it was a historic night, not only for Fresno State, but for the entire Armenian community right here in the Central Valley, more than 60,000 strong. This monument includes soil that came from Armenia, the first of its kind on any campus around the country. This is the place where students can come and they can learn about what happened 100 years ago. The Armenian Genocide began back in 1915, as you all know. We've talked about it many times on this program, lasted four years. In fact, Pope Francis recently described it as the first genocide of the 20th century as it was uh, carried out in two different phases. There were death marches leading into the Syrian desert. Armenians were deprived of food, water. They were raped. They were massacred. To this day, Turkey, not even this country, the United States, has not recognized the genocide, although there is hope that enough interest might be generated, perhaps someday, to convince Congress and the President to change all of that. In April, Stephanie Berugian of KC24 traveled to Armenia for the second time with her photographer, videographer, Kevin Mahan, and the KC24 news anchor said it was a life-changing experience. Valley Armenian Heritage, 100 years. Presented by Fashion Furniture at River Park. 
It's a procession of thousands at the Armenian Genocide Monument in Yerevan, Armenia. Armenians worldwide and some from the valley are coming here to pay their respects to the one and a half million Armenians who died in the Armenian Genocide. Earlier this morning, world leaders passed through, including the president of Armenia, the Russian president, and a U.S. delegation. But this is the time where the monument is open for the public procession. Many lay flowers at the eternal flame. There are tears, but also unity and pride as Armenians remember their tragic past, but also celebrate their survival. Stephanie Berugi and KC24, Local News That Matters. That's right, it does matter. Live in our studio right now is Stephanie Berugian of KC24, her videographer. They both traveled to Armenia, Kevin Mahan. They are here to talk about their trip to Armenia. It was the second trip for Stephanie and, of course, uh, her second appearance here on Connect With Me. Kevin, his first uh, trip here to the studios, but I'm anxious to hear about their trip and what they experienced, who they talked to. I see Vladimir Putin was there in Armenia, and a uh, very interesting trip, I imagine, for him. So 436-ME-TV, option. 11. Happy to have in the studio today Kevin Mahan and Stephanie Berugian back with our program in just a moment. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment. Tune in to Heartland for the best in true country music. Relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. I don't know if you saw this copy of the Fresno Bee, but uh, let's see what the date was on here because I forgot myself. May 14th, it had Stephanie Berugian right here on the front cover of Life, and uh, it was written, of course, by Rick Bentley, the trip to Armenia, and I welcome you back to the program. Stephanie, good to see Hello. you. How are you? Kevin, good to meet you. How meet are you? you? So tell me, how was the trip? Uh, are oh. you finally recovered, or do you wish that oh, yes. maybe We're you could go back? <laughs> <laughs> it took a, a little while to recover because yeah. of uh, the time difference and the jet lag and all of that but honestly I still think about that trip every day it just uh, has left such a wonderful impression on my memory and uh, I I want to go back so I was reading Rick Bentley's article and I've, I've read it many times and I read it again last night after the game was over by the way <laughs> <laughs> the Warriors game and it said, uh, you know, you, you mentioned to Rick Bentley that it was a life-changing experience. And explain how it changed your life, because you've been to Armenia before. I have been to Armenia, and really both trips uh, were life um it, it, it left a great impression on me. Uh, really, this one certainly being there for the genocide commemoration was uh, incredible. But even my first visit, I think, really impacted my life. Both of them did. And I think that's why I stressed um, that part of it so much in the interview that I did with him. Because to go back to an area um, that uh, had such an important significance to my ancestors was really something I had dreamed about for years and when I was finally able to do so five years ago and again um, just this past year um, it, it just has left such a lasting memory and I think it really brought me closer to maybe what my family had gone through and what that culture means to me so it really has been life-changing I know there are many Armenians of course in our area so culture is all around around us, but I think when you go to the origin of that culture, it really does have much more of an impact. Yeah, Kevin, you're not Armenian, but not. You, you went to Armenia for the first time. And I got to ask you, before I ask you your experiences there, what did you see in Stephanie? Did, did, you, see, did you see a lot of emotion? Yeah, and I think more of the emotion was when we went, went to a few of the different regions and we, we saw folks that have experienced from the 80s, the earthquake that happened in the late 80s, and they're oh, yeah. still suffering the effects from that. And um, to this day, yeah. And of course, when mm -hmm. we were there for the uh, memorial, 
it it just is something that you you couldn't help but be touched. I was touched, and I really don't have any you know direct emotional connection to the genocide, but you 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 can't help but be touched by that. And I, and I know it did affect Stephanie, and you know she was able to regain her composure and do some really good reports. <laughs> but you know it right. did it did touch her because how did it affect her? Do you think in your in your eyes? Just I mean to to make that connection to know that your 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 ancestors your family were able to escape a situation that many, many did not. You know, yeah. folks that just had generations wiped out. And, yeah. and who knows what the offspring would have become had mm -hmm. they been able to, to survive and, you know, and contribute to the world. Yeah, that's right. So Stephanie, in, in, in your reports, what did you try to emphasize? What did you want the viewer at home to, to, to walk away from the, the, the television set and say, wow, I did not know that. What, what were you trying to emphasize? I think really the purpose of our trip was to share the experience with our local viewers. Um, the community, of course, was just... Um, so we had the genocide monument at Fresno State, and, and for the months leading up to the commemoration, there were a number of events to really um, enlighten our community, the non-Armenian community, about what happened in Armenia 100 years ago. And I think um, the purpose of our trip was to share even more of the experience with our local viewers, um, show them what was happening in Armenia. And we had such a unique opportunity to do that. We were, of course, the only local news uh, crew there. And really, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I don't know that there were any other crews from the United States there. Yeah, I think we were one of the few. Just one of the few reporters right. from this country there. Yeah. Right. Caller, go ahead. Are you there? Yes, um, you say that it's that it's good to uh, know the, uh, your culture, which I, I agree. But why do you think that it's good to know the bad things that happened in your life and uh, the genocide that you call it um, is, is so important to remember in your in your culture? Well, I think the the purpose of remembering, yeah, it's a it was a very tragic event that impacted my family and the family of <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of people and I think it's important to remember such a tragic event because we don't want that type of event to happen again and it's still continuing to happen but I think acknowledging something and remembering something so tragic it plants a seed um, you know in good people that we don't want this to happen again and if there's anything that we can do to prevent it in the future I think it's very important to do so and I think that's the whole um, crusade and mission of the Armenians that, that this needs to be acknowledged and remembered so that um, we don't repeat this this horrific moment in history. Yeah, we don't want to repeat. And you don't have to be Armenian to be, you know, able to recognize what happened a hundred years ago. The Armenian genocide wiped out a million and a half Armenians and other people from other cultures as well. Stephanie Berugian is here. Uh, Kevin Mahan is here. They both went to Armenia recently. Your phone calls are encouraged. 436, Me TV Option 11. Dr. Thomas Casagrande, our sponsor today here on the program. We're back in a moment. Hello, I'm John Walsh. We need your help to capture this fugitive. Julio Cesar Guevara Mejia is wanted by the FBI in Sacramento for the attempted murder of a 19-year-old female in November of 2007. Police say he lured the young woman to a hotel room where he shot her three times in the chest. He could be in Palm Springs, California or Houston, Texas. Contact the FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI if you have any information. Take a look at this. Let's play. This is too hip for y'all. Slow down. Let's play. Watch all your favorite classic game shows on Buzzer TV, KVBC Digital Channel 13.7.
We're in the village of Ditevan in the Tavrush region of northwest Armenia. This is one of 160 border villages in Armenia and one of 120 on the front lines bordering Azerbaijan. Residents say they live in fear, yet life goes on. This school that was built in 2012 with money from the Hayastan All Armenian Fund serves the town's 40 children and gives them a quality education despite the other hardships of living in this area. Stephanie Barugian, KC24, local news that matters. Back here on the program with Stephanie Barugian and Kevin Mahan. They went to Armenia recently. Let me ask you, when did you travel there and were you doing report, were you sending the reports back via satellite or? Or how did that work? Well, or did let, you just bring them back here? No, uh, uh, that particular report we sent back, and I'll let Kevin explain how all that technical stuff works. <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't know. <laughs> Imagine you, you, you've, worked, you've worked in TV for a long time, as we have. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably five years ago, it wouldn't have been possible to do what we did. Just the technology advances. We all we needed was a laptop and Wi-Fi connection. So That's we would it? we would we would edit, edit everything, and um, our company has a server a Latiku, um uh, app that we have on the computers so once we've edited the story we just send it to Latiku. it gets sent via the internet back here to the station and then they download it so you know depending mm. on how big the story was it might take 20 to 30 minutes to upload it to the site and then probably another 10 minutes for them to download it at the station but i mean that quick so we did do um, a daily little synopsis like that short little package yeah. you saw there. And then on the Thursday and the Friday that we were there, the 23rd and the 24th, we actually did longer pieces that we sent back for a day of. And because of the time difference, you know, we were getting done with our work at 11 o'clock at night, putting the story together. And when we sent it, it was probably 10 o'clock in the morning here so that they had it well in advance of the evening newscast. But... You know, modern technology makes everything so much... Well, I, I have to ca couch that. Things are easier, but they are also <laughs> difficult because computers, as we know, sometimes yeah. don't work when you want them to. Yeah. And there is Wi-Fi. We, for, you know, our hotel rooms had Wi-Fi in there, but, you know, in the some of these little villages, we weren't yeah. connected, so when there did were delays. You, when did you make the trip, and how long were you there? And, and also, the second part of that question, Stephanie, we saw that stand-up coming out of break. Um, exactly where was that again? I'm sorry. <laughs> we, <laughs> were, <laughs> we were in um, a little village in actually, uh, I'm trying, eastern Armenia. Yeah, right, right? Tabush region, right? Ta yeah, in the Tabush, in the northeastern region. I think I may have said northwestern, but that was okay. not, that was actually incorrect. <laughs> um, it, it kind of, we kind of lost track of where we were. Sometimes. Hang on, caller. Um, we were in a small village called Ditevan, and I was, um, it, we were at a school. It's, it's, what's it called again? Ditevan. Ditevan. And it's a okay. border village uh, between Armenia, or uh, in Armenia, but it borders Azerbaijan. So it's a very okay. tense okay. region because yeah. those two countries really aren't all that friendly. Even to this day. Even to this day. Okay. So um, it was an, a, a unique situation for the, the residents there, but um, we were in a school that had been recently built and I was standing, it was a two-level school, so I was a, there was yeah. kind of a little balcony area on the second floor, and you could really, you looked out, you know, in the, uh, in the distance, and you could see the border with Azerbaijan. Yeah. And so that's where I was at that yeah. time. And amazingly, there's still shelling going on from They're Azerbaijan. shooting back and forth? Oh, yeah. And uh, Across we the were border. warned that, hey, you got to be a little bit careful in this region. We were at the border. We were only there like right at the border for probably 10 or 15 minutes to get a few shots. And there's a lot of farmland there that is a little inaccessible for folks because there's a there's a fear of being bombed while you're working on the farm. Yeah, caller, go ahead, are you there? Yeah, Armenia is such a beautiful country. Were you guys taking a chance like in the Middle East of getting kidnapped and ransomed or stuff like that? Um, I, uh, you know, we were, uh, we had people with us that kind of knew, really were, that uh, we had a translator and a driver, and I think they were very cautious about where they took us. We didn't cross into the, uh, into the border, into Azerbaijan, so I never felt unsafe in any mm -hmm. way, and, you know, no, I, I wasn't concerned about it. I didn't really think about all of that, um, because we were really focusing on trying to tell the story and share the experience with our viewers 
viewers. So I never felt unsafe at any time, even in that region. Um, we just were doing our job, and so is, I, is I don't there a little buffer zone between the two countries? Just a there's, little bit. Well, there's a there's a border. There are border guards. And there was, as you saw, there was a like, lake. Yeah. At, at that section, but still, you were within range of. What I mean by a buffer other. zone is that little zone where you don't want to be in because the, the shells could come over, you could get hit, you well, could get I, hurt. I think there might be some parts of Armenia that are maybe a little bit more dangerous. I think they yeah. took us to an area, even though the residents we spoke to said they do. Uh, have concern and fear about going outside. Um, I think we were, t you know, taken to an area that maybe was a little more safe than other other parts. However, of However, earlier in our trip, we went to Nagorno-Karabakh, which is a disputed territory. Which is located. It's actually east. What, yeah, it was part of Azerbaijan and is now an an independent republic that is populated by Armenians, and I believe it's only recognized by Armenia. Uh, I don't. I don't know if the United States recognizes it, but it, it is a region where we were told when we were getting our passports. Would you like your passport stamped? Because if you do, and you somehow ended up in Azerbaijan, you'd be thrown thrown in prison for having a stamp. or having gone to that that yeah. part of the country. Right. Hey, we got to take a break here on Connect with Me. More with uh, Stephanie Brugian and Kevin Mahan. They had that trip uh, to Armenia just recently to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the genocide that took place, started in 1915. 436, Me TV, Option 11. A lot more to talk about. I want to ask when we come back about the mood of the people in Armenia and what their thoughts were of the genocide and the 100th commemoration. Back with your phone calls and uh, a timeout. Thomas Casagrande, our sponsor today. Back in a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the low price leading brand's reliable advice place. The Frigidaire Gallery Dream Kitchen Get Yours Today Place. You with me? Right now, get huge savings on select Frigidaire Gallery appliances and pay no interest when paid in full within six months at the hometown low price Think Outside the Big Box Place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. In 1988, 27 years ago, disaster struck in northwest Armenia. A devastating earthquake hit the town of Spitak. 40,000 people died, and the homes of those who did survive were left in ruins. In the nearby town of Gumri, you don't have to look too hard to find devastation. Nearly three decades after the quake, some victims still wait for relief. This is the home of Arusak Basegian and her three children. It's really a large packing crate. No bathroom, no kitchen, just a place for them to sleep and stay protected from the elements. Arusak was six when the quake struck, and she's lived in shelters like this ever since. I grew up in a little house just like this in a temporary shelter, and I feel like I am passing on this painful heritage to my children. My children are also growing up in a little house like this. Her son is 15, her daughter's 12 and 4. They seem like happy kids, yet it's tough going for this young single mom who lost her husband to a heart attack two years ago. Somehow we always had hope and we still had hope and we're smiling. It's the smile that keeps us going. Arusak's story is not unique. There are more than 3,000 of these crate-like homes throughout Gumri, temporary shelters that for many became permanent homes. For too long has, uh, has Gumri and the surrounding area been known as a disaster zone, and you cannot have a disaster zone three decades after the disaster. The nonprofit organization Armenia Fund has provided help to Armenia and neighboring nagorno karabakh for 21 years. One focus has been moving families out of these shelters and into new or refurbished homes. Okay, and so 
This is the apartment that will soon be given to Arusak and her kids. The house will be fully furnished and will have all the necessities. Uh, over here we have uh, the kitchen area that is going to be equipped with a refrigerator and a gas stove and we're going to have the washing machine and the dishwasher uh, in this area. A huge improvement for this family of four and they don't even know it yet. This is going to be what, uh, what any average family deserves. We're just restoring justice. Restoring hope one family at a time. And for one sweet and deserving family, finally that time has come. The Umre family, featured by Stephanie Berushin and Kevin Mahan of uh, KC24 uh, back in April, right? Yes. Yes, and uh, very inspiring story. Almost makes you feel um, just so grateful that we live here. Oh. <laughs> I mean, my gosh. I, I, I think... We, it, I, I don't, we discussed that, I think, as we were touring Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine living in what essentially is something that sits on the back of a train? It's probably like mm -hmm. 10 by 15, yeah. with no running water, no kitchen facilities. No bathroom. And being there for over 20 Five years and, and raising how, children and how do they survive I mean did she does she work she does she, she, she does, does work okay. she um, she had a job in the fields that's okay. what how she described it and her children go to school and uh, it was just a, such a touching moment for I think uh, for both of us to to be there and see because of the spirit of this this young mother and her children I they mean, were, my daughter was she she had a smile on her face the entire time we yeah. were there and you're just kind of thinking wow what, what would my attitude be if I was stuck in a situation like this I, I think there would be one of despair but she had done a really good job in instilling in her children hope because they they definitely had hope and they were just I mean, you, you could tell they were happy to be alive. And they were, I think, excited to see the TV cameras. <laughs> yeah, that, I think they, they knew, yeah. they, wow. uh, they, had a, they did have a television in, in their packing crate that and, they lived and, in. And Stephanie, the other thing is it brought home, uh, the, the, the at, like you mentioned, Kevin, the after effects of that earthquake even today, so many years after the yeah. fact. Yeah. Well, what does that tell you about the country of Armenia? Well, I think the problem it's, is, it's, too, is it's poverty ridden. There, yeah, yes. they were, they were, it just shows you the Soviet system they were so dependent on the, the, the communist regime. And I think, uh, and a lot of the Armenians told us this, the buildings that were built in the 60s and the 70s, it, it seemed like the, um, the, um, the Soviet building standards kind of went downhill. So those buildings were susceptible to big earthquakes like that. So they got the one-two punch of not only having a major earthquake destroying buildings that were substandard, and then not having the Soviet Union to help them out because the earthquake happened in 88, the fall of the Soviet Union mm -hmm. came in 89, so they just kind of were left in a vacuum with no one to help. How much Russian influence is there oh. in Armenia today? Great Russian Tremendous. influence. Yeah. How, uh, in, in what way? They still receive aid. I know, I know we talked to some of the um, student volunteers that we had in the media center, and uh, it seemed like a lot of them went to, ended up going to school in Russia and mm -hmm. actually lived in Russia. and. There were really no economic opportunities in Armenia, and, and the closest big country that they thought they could go to, to to do work or to have work was Russia. So they would go to like Sochi or, or Moscow to, in search of work. And I think for many of the, the older generation, they some of them liked living under Soviet rule. They, yeah. they felt they were taken care of and maybe their lives were better when they were part of the Soviet Union. So uh, we showed some images earlier of uh, Vladimir Putin uh, and his yeah. presence on the, the day of the genocide commemoration. The Armenian community, in the, the, the Armenians in the media center with us at that time, they were so excited that he was there. He's really like a superstar for many people in Armenia. So, and the, uh, the Soviet Union built a lot of beautiful cultural type buildings and, and monuments in that we saw in Yerevan and you know they're still standing today so I think it's influenced uh, their cuisine there are still many Soviet influences in Armenia 
For the older generation, the people that have been there all their lives, they've never left the country, what is their mood like, Stephanie? And for the younger generation, I mean, I have very young kids. When I say younger generation, I mean the teenagers, maybe kids that are, that are, that are the same age as your children. What is there, what, is there a difference between the mood? Is there optimism? Is there despair? What, what's the mood like I overall? Think, I think there's a lot of concern about um, finding jobs, but um, For the, the younger generation. The, yes, because I, I again I'm speaking to those the young people that we met um, on the day of the the commemoration. There was a, a large contingent of young volunteers, and and we talked about you know what they were going to. A lot of them were in school and what they were going to be doing after. And there's concern about finding jobs. There's a high yeah. unemployment rate, but um, there's also a very strong uh, feeling about staying in that country and and helping Armenia prosper and thrive so uh, there's also that that whole sentiment of of staying true to the heritage and and making it a better place so and they want to stay they don't want to leave well some want to leave but I, I there's a very strong sentiment about people yeah. Armenians even Armenians from other parts of the world returning to Armenia uh, there's a a, a a very strong wish that Armenians mm -hmm. would return to the homeland and uh, help and be a part of of the future the struggle goes on as you saw huh in armenia kevin is yeah. it is it is it as evident uh in your eyes as it is to me and i have i've never even been there but just from what i've seen what i've read about what's going on in armenia is the poverty just really yeah i don't as, I don't, as, I don't think it's an easy life for anybody there it's a difficult life isn't yeah it? yeah i mean maybe in yerevan because you are in the capital and there are modern amenities but in these, you know, these rural areas, I mean, it's, I mean, you're... Some don't even have running water, well, and there's, there or is... A or a bathroom. Right, yeah. correct, and there, and there is a, um, I, I know we were, uh, our guides for the first portion of our trip uh, were provided by the Armenia Fund, which is a fundraising organization. It's actually an international organization. And, um, but the, we were, uh, our guides came from the Armenia Fund, which is based in Los Angeles, and their mission is to raise funds and yeah. provide improvements. They've uh, yeah, they raised numerous schools. Schools and, pro and provided water and re, re uh, improved roads. And so, and there are other fundraising organizations internationally as well. So there is a large movement around the world to provide um, a better life for the people, especially in these rural areas. Hey, quickly, before we go to break, so where did you, I mean, you stayed at a hotel, but when you were in these rural areas uh, doing these reports, where did you stay? Where did you sleep over? Do you have to go back to the hotel? Yeah, to yeah. we ended up going, like when we were in Nagorno Karabakh, we went back to which was a really nice, probably the nicest hotel <laughs> that we stayed in. But yeah, we did a lot of, you know, we'd have a day where we'd start off at 10 in the morning and we wouldn't get back to our hotel room until 2 the following morning. So, did you have any families invite you to stay overnight with them? Or? We didn't really have that. We stayed in, when we were in Nagorno Karabakh, we stayed in Stepanakert, which is the capital city. And, you know, it's a city, so they yeah. have nice amenities there. And when we were in Armenia, we stayed in Yerevan, and there are, of course, modern hotels there. And you had to drive back there. Every we night. did a lot of, we yeah. covered so much territory. Oh. Oh, cool. And uh, I, w we were invited not necessarily to spend the night but invited we saw the little the little uh, older woman in Didevan um, who I know doesn't probably have much and she did invite us into her home to have coffee and <laughs> we weren't able to do it because we were on such a tight schedule but people are very generous and yeah. and very welcoming caller are you there go ahead yes yeah, Stephanie in your opinion do you think that that Armenia was better off under Russian rule and uh, where do you see Armenia going from here without Russian rule? I think uh, I I don't not having exp have experienced Armenia under Russian rule. I it's really hard for me to. Um, comment specifically on that. Like I said, we spoke to people who felt it was better. On both of my trips, I, I heard directly from people who felt that way. But also, I think that the, um, the population struggled a lot. So I think 
po you know, in the future, I think there's such a, a movement to support Armenia, and it's it appears that a lot of good things are happening, and the people do seem happy. So, I mean, my hope is that it will continue to thrive and improve. And I really can't say what was, which one was better, but I think being an independent country is always a better yeah. thing. And yeah. and it's there are struggles that go along with that, but I, no. I think ultimately it probably was the best thing. All right, got to take a break. We're with Stephanie Berugian and Kevin Mahan of KC24 talking about their trip to Armenia. You are more than welcome to call in. 436-MEET-TV, option 11. We're here for the next uh, 25 minutes or so, so you can call in. Thomas Casagrande is our sponsor today. We're back here on Connect With Me in just a moment. We need help to find this missing child. Hallie Cummings was seven when she went missing. She was last seen in Satsuma, Florida in February of 2009. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 11. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring Hallie Cummings home. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. We're here at the halfway point of our program. Uh, connect with me on MeTV Fresno, talking with Stephanie Berugian and uh, Kevin Mahan. And uh, you know, you you generated probably a lot of interest in, in your special. And I do I do want to play another clip from that. Uh, which one should we play here? You you know you you pick one, and then we can just run it here. Um, which one, Steph? Well, um, Shosh Village, that would be a nice one okay. to see. I mean, it really, I think, shows what some of the improvements that are being done okay. um, in, in Armenia. All right, let's run that one, Shosh Village. And as you know, um, Armenia is, well, self-reliant right now. And so let's take a look at Stephanie's piece, shot by Kevin Mahan. It's a tiny country, 1,700 square miles in all. Nagorno-Karabakh borders Armenia to the west and Azerbaijan to the east. 150,000 people live here, nearly half in the capital of Stepanakert, but the majority in small towns and villages. Karapakh was at the center of a violent dispute in the early 90s. Though it was once a part of Armenia, the Azeris tried to seize control. A three-year war broke out and left people dead and villages in shambles. Twenty years later, nagorno karabakh is independent, but remnants of the war remain. A bombed-out school in Shosh village serves is a reminder of what once was. But a new school and a bus were provided by a nonprofit organization called the Armenia Fund. Vital addition, says principal Hamlet Heratunian. Of course, education is important, and we do our best for our kids to continue education at the university. But we also work on them to become good people and good citizens of Artsakh. The fund was established after the Karabakh War. Millions of donated dollars have been used to provide paved roads, drinking water, schools and other necessities. This is the framework for a new community center in the village of Kamir Shuka, population 650. It's one of 40 community centers the All Armenia Fund has built in the past 23 years. And for the people of this area, this really serves as the heart of the village. Back in Shosh village, a new $400,000 community and health center will soon open and replace this old one. Mayor Eric Abrahamian is thankful. <laughs> For us, this is something unimaginable, and I want to thank the highest fund and all the benefactors of the diaspora, without whom this building would simply not be there. The government of nagorno karabakh is also involved in the recovery. We met with President Bako Sahakian, who said security for residents is a great concern. Um, I taking into consideration all the uh, geographic, geopolitical things. And the president said that the most important thing for any government of Artsakh, for any leadership, is to further strengthen the security components of our country, to make the country stronger. 
The old bombed out school in Shosh Village may someday be restored as a museum. In the meantime, residents are looking to the future and the promising new additions still to come. Back here with Stephanie Brugian and Kevin Mayhem. Th those stories are so well shot and mm -hmm. so well written and told. Thank you. They should be um, shown at colleges around the country as to what happened and, and what's going on in Armenia. It's so well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Really. And so that, you know, the Armenia Fund, that kind of highlights what that fund was all about and what the money has done to provide for these people. It's provided a lot. I think we were amazed at what we saw and village after village, um, so many improvements. And I, I think, and this is in the neighboring country of Nagorno-Karabakh where we were at that time. A lot of the relief effort has been focused there because of the, the war. And we still saw so much rubble from, from the war. It was just I was surprised to see that, and, and the government, as we had the, the honor of speaking to the president, and he yeah. said that so much of his focus is on um, just making that area secure. That's a, a job in itself, of course. Caller, you're on with Stephanie and Kevin. Go ahead. Are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, Stephanie, let me ask you a question. Uh, my mom used to work at the, at the Collison Hospital there called the Armenian Home, and it I... I I mean, I'm, I'm very shocked when I saw it because the people were nice, you know, and it's always a, a nice place for Armenian. I believe it's for Armenian descendants or, or grandmothers, grandfathers, who, mm. who for years and years to live like, and I, I don't know for sure, Stephanie, but, uh, but is that part of uh, uh, where most of the Armenian uh, uh, ancestries go to, you know, to, to stay, you know, and, and whatnot. It, it's, I mean, I, I loved it you know, when I used to go pick up my mom. Yeah, it's a beautiful, and it is a beautiful facility. And actually, my one of my grandmothers um, was did actually stay there for um, the last few months of her life. But so it's a wonderful facility. I, I don't know that it is, I don't believe that it is just for Armenians, but it is a, a, a retirement and a, a, a place where where ailing folks can go and, and yeah. be taken care of. But um, I I think every Armenian, uh, every Armenian has a story that is connection connected to the genocide. So, uh, you know, I, I a horrible story. Too, yeah, a, tra that. a tragic yeah. story, sadly. But every every Armenian I, does have a connection. You know, I want to rerun some of that video if we can, Lauren, in the monologue that shows the monument uh, of the Armenian genocide that uh, was erected, and they unveiled it actually uh, in April at Fresno State. And I want to get your thoughts on that because you know there's so many Armenians here in the Central Valley and in California, Los Angeles as well. There it is, right there, beautiful monument, mm -hmm. right there displayed and uh, what what I mean what uh, what can you tell us from from your heart Stephanie what this means to you I think it's just uh, it's such a pride it, there's so much pride in seeing this monument I think it was very important for our community to have a place to acknowledge what happened because Armenians are such an important part of our local population and have come to this area and done so much for the Central Valley in terms of, um, I mean, the Valley has done a lot for the Armenians in terms of providing opportunities here, but the Armenians really have become such an important part, have donated money, have provided jobs for others, have uh, been a um, just an important part of our, our local economy. And I think it was important to have this monument to acknowledge what Armenians have done and what happened to Armenians in the past. And I know every detail of that monument, so much thought was put into it to tell the story of what happened 100 years ago. And it was paid for through generous donations yeah. from our local community. And I think it's a, just a, a, a prideful 
uh, reminder, par- reminder um, and, and a, a prideful part of the campus um, at Fresno State. So uh, just wonderful that, that the land was provided to put this, this beautiful monument in place. I know you're not Armenian, but what does the monument mean to you? Well, having been to the original now and, yeah. and seeing the one at Fresno State, it really is impressive. And another thing that was really exciting was being in Armenia when this was being un- unveiled and being able to show folks there via Facebook, social media, Twitter. It's like, look what folks in Fresno are doing to commemorate this event. And a lot of people were very surprised that uh, somebody in the United States would go through this much trouble to build a monument. And we did share pictures. And there are very many similarities between the monument in Yerevan and the, the, the yeah. parts of the design are similar. And it's so easy with the Internet now to share pictures because that monument here at Fresno State is all over the Internet. And uh, it's just it's easy to just call it up, boom, and there it is. And it was funny because yeah. we were there <laughs> at night doing work, or excuse me, the next morning when they were unveiling it at night. So literally yeah. when it was happening, we were able to show folks in real time, hey, this is what's going on in, in, in the place where we're from. Right. Hey, let's not forget, there are a lot of Armenians in Los Angeles, too, oh, all over yes. California yes. and in Fresno. And uh, Stephanie Brugian is here along with Kevin Mahan, her videographer. They both went to Armenia to commemorate the 100th, obviously, the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. And what an anniversary it was. Anyway, uh, 436 Me TV option 11 is the phone number. Dr. Thomas Gasagrande is our sponsor today here on the program. Glad you're here. Back in a moment. It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and television the Me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. This week, I've been sharing stories from my recent tour of Armenia, and the focus tonight is improvements to some of the schools there. One in particular really was impressive. It's in the small country neighboring Armenia called Nagorno-Karabakh. It's a place that was heavily damaged in war, but through donations has been restored into something very special. A gifted pianist performs for his classmates. A young soprano works with her teacher to perfect her singing skills. You might think this is a top-notch American performing arts school. It is top-notch, but it's not here. This is in the tiny country that neighbors Armenia called Nagorno-Karabakh. Syed Nova Musical College is 54 years old, but recently underwent a $2 million renovation, provided in part by donations to the nonprofit Armenia Fund. Karin Dadamian is principal. Kids come here after middle school and do their several years, and after they graduate, they received a professional diploma of their specific field of their study. The school in the capital city of Stepanakert was heavily damaged during the nagorno karabakh conflict with neighboring Azerbaijan in the early 90s, but it has been beautifully restored. Providing opportunities to 125 gifted students, including two young men who serve in the military. The diploma from this college is something you can hold on to and create job and career opportunities because it is very high esteemed. In the town of Shushi, another school restoration by the nonprofit fund, in a place where remnants of war are everywhere. 500 first through ninth graders are served at this campus and enjoy after school enrichment programs like arts and crafts and drama. Something fun to do when class is done. The scars of a distant war have yet to heal, but there's also beauty to be found in Shushi. It attracted Karen Yang, a visitor from China. 
I think、um, there are a lot of things to see. For example, the history, the culture, the religion, the people here, and even the food is delicious. The Cathedral of the Holy Savior, a sacred place the Azeris used to store their weapons during the war, has also been restored to its former beauty, mesmerizing those who are now fortunate to stop by. More evidence of the Armenian Fund and and what it's done in Armenia. And I got to ask both of you、uh, of you this question, and that is, when you when you travel to Armenia, is it quite evident that it is it still a war torn country? Well, in those when you go to little villages、uh, that we saw,、mm -hmm. yes, the building, the rubble is everywhere. Wow.、Uh, so it it's shocking to see. Um, it, it, mm. They don't. They haven't even demoed those buildings yet. But it, it really does. Well, it's been twenty years. Yes. I mean. Yes. So yeah, the infrastructure too.、Um, driving to these villages. I mean, you take one sixty-eight up into the mountains. That's a <laughs> that's a luxury cruise compared to some of the roads we're on, where you know, and, you know our drivers doing seventy. Then all of a sudden he screeches to a halt, goes into the opposite travel lane because there's a giant. <laughs> Potholes, potholes. Suck the scene, you know. Yeah. Oh my God. So it was. A, it's. It's, <laughs> it's not easy to travel by car. Yeah. It really isn't. You're traveling by、way. car, or jeep, or what? Just a Renault station wagon. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. I want to roll a video tape. I think we have it. It's of the,、uh, and we showed it in the monologue. It's of the Armenian genocide and what happened. It's very disturbing. But the, but the reason I want to show it is, and I don't think we can emphasize it enough, because I want to ask the question. You you talk to the people of Armenia. You ate with them. You you experience the lifestyle, the culture. Do they care as much about the United States and Turkey recognizing the Armenian genocide as we do here? I think there is they. I think there is care. There were we had a few moments and brushes with people where there was some anger directed when、Toward、they、us. found out. Yeah, when they found out. In fact, Kevin had a, a crazy <laughs> story the day、uh, on April 24th. We were when we were at the the genocide monument in Yerevan. Kevin, tell explain what happened. Yeah, I was I was getting some shots, and it's a real somber、uh, part of the ceremony where folks are laying their. Roses near the eternal flame.、Right. I had a man come up to me and said,、uh, "Where are you from?" And I said, "The United States." Well, I'd like to say something, so I started to roll the camera, and he just kind of went on and on about how you know we needed to recognize the genocide, and Obama needed to do this and that. And I tried to explain to him that what the government recognizes and what the people recognize are two different things. In the United States, and that there were a lot of folks that were in support of recognizing the genocide. But I think he just wanted to get some stuff off of his chest, and、right. he screamed at me and just was kind of really loud and obnoxious, and then turned and went away. And then somebody turned to me and said, "You know, hey, don't worry about it." It's just a loose cannon. But, it, but he got it off his chest. He I, did. There's nothing think, wrong with right, that. Right. No, and, and you know, and, and I'm all for that. And it, I just kind of was a little taken aback because we're here in a Solemn place, and he definitely could be heard amongst everybody. But、uh, but there's so much emotion, and、no. I and I think it I think it is an, something important that the United States needs to do.、Um, so there, the, the genocide is the commemoration is very important. We were everywhere we went in Armenia and Nagorno Karabakh. People were acknowledging what had happened. Do we have time to run one more、uh, Stephanie package? Armenia remembers gen the genocide. Do we have time to run that? Okay, let's run that now because a very appropriate moment to run that now. Stephanie Berujan and Kevin Mahan in Armenia remembering the genocide at the time that it actually happened on April 24th. Heritage 100 years presented by Fashion Furniture at River Park. The rain was pouring, but it didn't stop thousands from making the journey to the Armenian Genocide Monument. Rafi Pilavdian came all the way from Fresno with his nine-year-old son Duro. God is crying right now. I mean, it happens every year. It rains like this.、Um, we're, it's just I don't I don't know how to say it in words. I mean, it just I'm getting chills every time、um, just to be here with our people. On this day, 100 years ago, 250 Armenian intellectuals were rounded up and murdered by the Ottoman Turks. It marked the start of the Armenian genocide that left 1.5 million people dead. 
Today, Armenian's president, Serge Sargisian, says it's our responsibility to prevent such shameful acts in the future. He was joined by the presidents of Russia, France, and delegations from around the world, including the U.S., to remember those who died. Asa Turgalazian of Glendale brought a wreath to commemorate the martyrs. His grandparents suffered in the genocide, and he's thinking of them on this day. Actually, my grandparents parents were killed in 1915. Only uh, my, grandpa, uh, my grandpa and his brother was the only one who was alive. It's hard. Very it's difficult. It's emotional to be. It is. Thousands of flowers now circle the monument's eternal flame and are protected by 12 slabs representing the 12 lost provinces in present-day Turkey. Off to the side, a 44-meter pillar symbolizes the rebirth of Armenians here and around the world. It's a time of unity, but still raises an important question that even the youngest in the crowd want to know. Why did why this happen? Like... Why did they have to come and kill innocent people? No answers offered, just an amazing display of resilience and remembrance. Armenians call this monument Zitze Nakabert, which means swallow's nest, because a swallow is known for returning to its nest to rebuild year after year. And Armenians hope that diaspora in Armenians will do as the swallows do and return someday to their homeland. In Armenia, Stephanie Baruji and KC24, local news that matters. What a great history lesson for all of us, of course. Stephanie going to um, Armenia for the second time with uh, Kevin Mahan. And a couple of email questions here. Could uh, reparations come even if Turkey does not recognize the genocide officially? What do you think? Well, I'm sure there are a lot of people that would like to see that happen. But um, I think that may be part of the reason why Turkey doesn't want to <laughs> make that acknowledgement yeah. because of the reparations. However, I do think a lot of folks just want the acknowledgement that something happened. I mean, almost, almost I, I think the majority of them would just like to say, you know, that, that Turkey acknowledges what happened and then maybe we can move on from this. Yeah. They, they really... You know, obviously people are going to search for reparations, but I think that they just want an acknowledgement that something happened and that, that they, the genocide is not being denied. Right. Okay. Another email question. Can your guests talk about the... Uh what is that? Vara oh, Vara's Vara Museum. Vara's Museum in Yerevan. Yes, and we got okay. a chance to see that when right. Vara Samuelian, local, uh, right. he was born in Armenia, but lived a good part of his life here in Fresno. Local connection. Yes, he made the David of Sassoon statue in our courthouse park. When he died, he left a $500,000 bequest that the Ar that to the Armenia Fund, and they used that money to build a community art center in art in the in the town of Artik in. In Armenia and it is a community center with a focus on art they have art classes and all sorts of fun students courses were English. For, yes English classes for Music, students singing and it's just a, it was a beautiful gift that he left for the people of Armenia he wanted to do something for them uh, in his passing and uh, it, they did build that center and it's a, a couple of years ago and it's just a wonderful and contribution. A connection too with William Saroyan as well. Oh yes. I mean it, incredibly strong and I want to ask you Kevin uh, does it make you want to go closer to your roots where your ancestors came from? Well I think um, in general I, I've always been interested in my roots and I've had the, the, um, the benefit of being able to uh, my mom's Colombian and I have been to Colombia a couple of times. I think it's good to know where you're from, where your families come from, but also, you know, we're intertwined here. I, I consider myself an American, and um, I, I think it just helps your worldview, learning about different cultures and different countries and experiencing them, because then when you come back here to the country, yeah, we have a lot of things wrong in the United States, but we do have a lot of things right, and, and we can appreciate more what we have, and maybe we can work together to make it better for future generations here in this country. And Stephanie, would you like to go back to Armenia, just not with the, I don't want to say the burden, but the responsibility <laughs> of having to work, like a vacation, maybe take your family. Absolutely. And just relax and experience the culture. And I would, I would love to go back and revisit many of the things that I have seen, the historic yeah. monuments, and, and share that experience. I, I would love for my children to see it, and my husband, and yes, I would like to go back. It both 
times I've been there have been magnificent. But yeah. it's been a lot of hard work, long days, and, and you hit I the know. ground running and you don't stop. So I'd love to be able to stop and really yeah. just soak in more of the culture. Yeah, a lot of people out there, they don't realize you go on a trip like that and you're having to work. It's like no sleep. It's all work. <laughs> And the yeah. burden to get that and the responsibility to get those stories done and back is is really a heavy burden. It, it is. It really is. You gotta, you're always in the back of your mind, is it going to be done on time? But, uh, <laughs> but I, would, I am so thankful for the opportunity yeah. to have been able to do that. And we thank you for bringing it to us. It was outstanding. Great education. Thank like you. I said, it should be used as an educational tool in the colleges so we could find out what happened 100 years ago. Stephanie, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Come back again. Kevin, thank you, good meeting you. Nice Come back you. again. All right, tomorrow, that's going to do it for us. I was going to say tomorrow's program. I'll tell you that in a moment, but I want to thank Thanks, Stephanie Brugian, Kevin Mahan from KC24. Tomorrow, Dan Payne, our terrorism expert, is going to be here to talk about what's going on, the latest in terrorism around the world. Have a great day. See you back here tomorrow.